Hi all. In the previous videos, we learned about metabolic pathways and about the enzymes that catalyze each reaction within those pathways. In the remaining videos of this chapter, we'll examine several metabolic pathways that work together to accomplish the job of producing usable energy for the cell. Let's remind ourselves. What is energy? Energy is the ability to make things move. What is moving in a molecule? Electrons are moving at very high speed around the nuclei of atoms. Back to the picture on the slide, the usable forms of energy that all cells rely on is adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. We can see a picture of ATP on this slide. It consists of an adenosine molecule and three phosphate groups labeled alpha, beta, and gamma phosphates. The bond between the gamma and beta phosphate of ATP is a high energy bond. When this bond is broken, energy is liberated and the molecules adenosine diphosphate, ADP, and inorganic phosphate are produced. That liberated energy can be used for cellular functions that require energy, making muscle fibers contract, performing anabolic reactions, or many other functions. A cell doesn't have an endless supply of ATPs. In order to continue functioning, the cell has to produce ATPs to replenish its supply. To make ATPs, the cell will combine ADP and inorganic phosphate, the re reverse of the reaction we just saw. That combining of ADP and phosphate requires an input of energy. ATP is often called the energy currency of the cell. It's like an energy dollar bill. It's worth a small amount. They're fairly easy to make, and they're fairly easy to spend. You want them when you want to use a little bit of energy, but you don't want to carry around a whole lot of them because they take up space and they're difficult to keep track of. So an organism that has a lot of energy will store the energy it doesn't immediately need in the form of larger, more stable molecules. Typical molecules that store more energy in a stable, long-term way are carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. For example, right now, potato plants over in Idaho are taking in sunlight energy and converting the energy first to ATPs and then from there into sugars. Right now is summertime when I'm recording this video. They're transporting some of those sugars down to an underground stem that links sugars together to make a starch, a polysaccharide. Those starch molecules will accumulate in starch vacuoles of that underground stem. The underground stem will swell up as its cells become filled with starch vacuoles. This is happening today, since in summertime, it's summertime when I'm making this video. It'll continue to happen through the fall. And then the above ground parts of the pit potato plant will die back and the plant will exist just as an underground stem. Over the winter, underground, the cells of that underground stem will catabolize or break down those starch molecules into glucose, which will then be used to make ATPs. That's how the potato survives underground during the winter. Either that, or a farmer may harvest that potato and send it to market. I might buy that potato and bake it. Then I might add some butter and sour cream and whatever else. Then I might consume those starches of that potato, along with the fats and proteins from those other things. In my body, my cells can take those carbs and lipids and proteins and break them down to produce ATP to power my body. I use the same processes as the potato plant does. Those processes are called glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation, which, which makes use of the electron transport system. We'll discuss each of these processes in turn in the rest of the chapter's videos.